Yeah. Hello, hello. My name is Kirill. I work with Parity, but uh, today I'm going to talk about the project which was concepted during the F Berlin, and so far it's my personal project, which I hope Parity will at some point adopt, but not yet fully. Yeah, and paper backups. Actually, backups on paper, like your personal archives and everything else, are wonderful, and I know that on paper things which outlived generations, like you can still read your, like letters from your grandma or something like that, storing info on paper is really age old and it works perfectly. And I doubt that our digital artifacts, our files with uh, password vaults or our uh, seed phrases or something like that, at the current state, that they are as reliable as on-paper backups. But there are actually a lot of problems with just printing out your seed phrase for your Bitcoin wallet, or printing out, I don't know, the directions where you buried the family silver or something like that, and just storing it. And the obvious problem is that if you store it in plain text, then it's really easy to leak that secret. It's really trivial for someone to make a copy of it, and you will not even know that the copy has been made or that the, your secret is retrieved, that it's not longer a secret. So what you're doing Obviously, next, you're going to encrypt your secret. And it is sort of like exhibit meme, because now you need to remember the secret for the uh, encrypted secret you have on paper, which sort of makes little sense, especially if you're thinking about, like, say, inheritance, like what happens with your Bitcoin wallet after you die. If you was the only one to remember that uh, secret for that encrypted secret, then it's all lost for your uh, children or whoever is going to inherit your value. And maybe we can just, you know, split it in pieces and hand it out to your friends. Like you have friends, you have family, you have, I don't know, colleagues or some people you trust. And if you just shard your secret in several pieces and hand them out, they can later reconstruct it without you. But since you trust them, then as long as people say no to the att attackers, then it's sort of safe, right? Except they can get lost one of your shards and then the secret is not reconstructable anymore. And that sucks. That basically the probability of Okay. And now for something completely different, right? <laughs> okay, so if you have five pieces of paper uh, handed out to five of your massive friends, the chances of you losing the part of your secrets and not being able to reconstruct it later is like way higher than uh, in comparison with only having one secret uh, on one paper stored in some secure place. So maybe we can do better. We can add redundancy. We can split our secret like this and, like, say you have three friends, like, really many three. Uh, you can split it with redundancy and you can, like, then use any two of those three copies to hand out. And you can, then, any two or three of your friends can reconstruct the secret. Except it is terrible because now it is only one third of the data is missing in, on each of the shards. So it's rather trivial to guess what your secret is. And this is no good. And this is where the special trick, which is called Shamir's Threshold Secret Sharing, comes from the rescue. And it is possible to do the charting in a way which doesn't disclose any info about you unless you have all the required amount of shards. And let me briefly explain how it works. Uh, imagine you have uh, like parabolic equation and basically your secret is the point where your parabola uh, just uh, intersects with a zero axis. Uh, then you can have two points somewhere and each point will be a secret you give to one of your friends and with two of the points there is completely zero hints on where that parabola intersects with a zero axis. But as soon as you add the third point somewhere you clearly indicate what is your parabola and then it's trivial to reconstruct what is the zero point of it. And nice thing is that you can have multiple, like you can have five, you can have 12 points on it and you still require three to reconstruct. So you can have 
m out of n constructions like this really easy. And if you need more required shards than this, you just increase the uh, order of polynomial you have. The only problem is our secrets are not rational numbers. This works perfectly with rational numbers. But if our secrets tend to be integers, because this is how we encode most of the information, like the phrases or even like uh, seeds uh, for our Bitcoin wallets or something like that, actually, unfortunately, just doing that straightforwardly won't work because there is only a limited amount of uh, integer coefficients for the polynomials which intersect the zero axis in the zero axis uh, in the integer points. Uh, so. Actually, it won't be zero uh, knowledge secret sharing. It will be a little bit more than zero secret sharing. So actually, they're not using just the regular polynomials. They're using the special polynomials of affinite fields, which look like these, but they are explicitly used for the uh, natural number arithmetics, and they're used everywhere where you do something like uh, uh, multiplication of integers you are doing like everywhere in crypto, basically. So that's the idea, and yeah, there are libraries like that, and we're going to use that to build our tool. But having a strong theoretical foundation for our tool is not enough to make it secure, because there are a lot of practical, very, very, like, you know, real attacks which are absorbed in the real world, so if I will just do the sh secret sharing, I will print out the papers, I will hand them out to other people, I can still get compromised, and I will just have like imaginary security. I won't have a real security improvement, but I will feel myself better and that will bite me in the end. So what can go wrong? Yeah, malicious printer. Like I'm going to print to the printer and printers are terribly insecure. And they have like memory of a backlog of the pages, like, like last thousand pages which they have printed. So I print all the shards on the single printer. Okay, then attacker can download that from the internal memory of the printer and reconstruct my secret right away. Or I'm doing, going to send the printing document via Wi-Fi and then someone can eavesdrop on my Wi-Fi communication and can extract the file. So basically printing everything which you need to reconstruct is no go. <coughs> and the only pragmatic solution to that I, that, uh, like I found is let's encrypt the secret and uh, let's shard our encrypted pieces and then let's not write down the decryption code directly on the paper when you print it, but you should use pen and paper to transfer it from screen to the printouts later. It is not ideal from UX perspective, but at least it's secure enough because now if people steal the, all of the pages without knowing the decryption secret, they have no use for the printouts. It won't help them to reconstruct the actual secret you have. What can, else can go wrong? Yeah, just compromised up because whatever it's going to be, it's going to be a piece of software and we need to really think a lot how make it less compromisable, how don't allow third party to uh, somehow, what can go wrong? First, I can just trick user to use the malicious app to share the secret, and then the secret will be at the same time with sharing, it will be just uploaded to the attacker server and secret is leaked. That's really terrible scenario. But another terrible scenario is like after the, fa like after the people are going to reconstruct the secret. They, uh, that app can leak the secrets. And we want application to be immutable from the st time you started to share the secrets till the time you try to recover it. And the pragmatical solution to that is design it somehow in a way that surface of attack is minimized. So it is offline only application, application which only works when you work offline and uh, doesn't work with any online te technologies enabled on your computer. And it should be something you can really easily redistribute, something portable you can download and you can hand out to your friends on a USB stick or like send them via mail and it should continue working. So basically the thing I'm des describing right now is a self-contained HTML page with some JavaScript embedded and that JavaScript just does, does the trick and it requires you to save the page to your hard drive and only after you saved it and opened it locally, it starts to work. And actually, yeah, 
I started and I wrote an MVP of this tool, and it is available on the really, really uh, easy to memorize URL. Uh, BS stands for banana split, obviously. And uh, yeah, it's GPL licensed, and it's available at the GitHub organization of my employer, Parity Tech. And any help is welcome. Uh, yeah, also thanks to the guys who provided the icons. And if we have five more minutes, it is like I will be able to just show you how terrible the application I wrote it actually is. Yeah, so basically this is explanation and when it's, I, sh I think I can zoom it in. I love that subdomain. Yeah. BS. Yes, banana split, clearly. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the problem with a self-contained HTML. You don't want to include too many images in it, right? <laughs> So first it requests to, uh, for the page to be saved, and we save it, and when we open it, and now it asks to go offline, because as I said, if it won't enforce it, then malicious applications can trick you to uploading the secrets to the third party, and that's not desired, so we are now going offline. Luckily, there is a still a checkbox in Firefox to do that. So we do work offline. And now we can just click share. And it is, it is a terrible secret. Terrible, yeah, I can spell. And like, on is best, uh, once again, I cannot spell. And we generate QR codes. And this is our secret, which is not copyable even. Like you cannot copy paste it and save it in your password manager, but that will be ridiculous. There is a lot of space for UI improvement in how we enforce you to actually write it down before you close the page. But what happens in here if we print it? I don't not going to print it anywhere in. Basically, in a printed version, those QR codes turned into the really, really nice shards with a space for the recovery uh, phrase, which you uh, expected to write down on every page in here. And when, uh, okay. when you click combine, you just allow your webcam to look, and it will detect the QR codes you're showing it from the paper, and it will reconstruct it, and then will, it will prompt for the secret. So basically, all the technical underpinnings are done, and I briefly showed it to my colleagues to verify that all the crypto I used in there is sort of sound, and there is nothing terrible is happening in there. And I really welcome those of you who like Vue.js and actually UI UX on the web to contribute and improve it.